Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. There's 87 days to go into your GCSE Maths exam and today we're going to focus on the topic of scatter graphs. So scatter graphs, it's very important you're able to answer scatter graph questions. I like to think they're quite nice questions to make sure that you're getting what we call like safe marks, so they're marks that you can hopefully pick up quite easily. So in terms of scatter graphs, there's different types of correlation. You've got your positive correlation, your negative correlation, and your no correlation. It's important you know those, and if you've got the revision card, that's card number 24. And also in this video, we're going to look at how to answer scatter graph questions, so how to draw lines of best fit, how to use those lines of best fit, and also whenever it's a bit dangerous or it's not advisable to use lines of best fit, so perhaps whenever you're using it beyond the range of the data or extrapolation and that would be card number 23. So in this video we're going to focus on scatter graphs so let's get started. Hi everyone today we're going to be looking at scatter graphs so we're going to look at how to plot points on scatter graphs, we're going to look at correlation, lines of best fit, how to use lines of best fit and also when we have to be careful of using lines of best fit. So here we've got a scatter graph below and it shows the cost of some plumbing jobs, 10 plumbing jobs and we've got some points. So for instance this point the job lasts half an hour, 0.5 hours and costs 90 pound. This job over here, it lasts five hours and costs £240. This point here, it's a two-hour job and costs £150 and so on. Now, sometimes in a GCSE question, you might be asked to plot some points. So they might say the next job, the 11th job, uh, lasts for three hours and costs £180. So you go across the three hours and you plot a point at £180 and so on. So you might need to be able to plot points on scatter graphs. I'd highly recommend looking at the practice questions and having a look at some questions where you have to plot points on scatter graphs. Okay, so that's how to plot points on scatter graphs. You just plot the points. Now let's look at correlation. So in terms of correlation, we've got positive correlation. So that's as one value goes up, another value goes up. So for instance, perhaps something like temperature and ice cream sales. As the temperature goes up, you'd expect more ice creams to be sold. So you'd expect a positive correlation. Okay, next we've got negative correlation. So that means as one value goes up, the other one comes down. So for instance, perhaps something such as the temperature and jumper sold. As the temperature increases, you'd expect less jumpers to be sold. So something like that. And then finally, we've got no correlation. And that's when the points are just scattered across the scatter graph and there's no connection connection or no correlation between them. Okay, so that's the, your type of correlation. It's important you know the different types of correlation. So if we go back to our question with the plumbing jobs and the price, the question says what type of correlation is shown. So as you can see, this is a positive correlation. As the length of the job goes up, the cost increases as well. So that's a positive correlation. So what type of correlation is shown? It's a positive correlation. So positive correlation. And that's it. Okay, now let's have a look at drawing lines of best fit. Sometimes whenever you've got points on scatter graphs, you need to draw a line of best fit. So here we've got a scatter graph and we're going to draw a line of best fit. So get your ruler and pencil and then you're going to draw a line so it's as close to the points as possible. So something like that. That would be a good line of best fit. Now I haven't actually changed the line of best fit due to this point. I think this is an outlier. So I'm not going to sort of start bringing the line up this way. I'm just going to draw the line for as, like, as close to these points as possible. So that's my line of best fit. Now one thing to note is that obviously people's lines of best fits may be a little bit different in terms of if I drew a line of best fit and you drew a line of best fit. It may be slightly different and whenever it comes to your GCSE maths exam in terms of that line of best fit they allow you to have um, different lines of best fit so they're not ex they're looking for one exact line they you know as long as you're between a sort of a certain region in terms of your graph they're like they're going to accept that so that's the line of best fit okay the next part our next part says estimate the cost of a job the last two and a half hours so here's our line of best fit and I want you to consider now how you might use this line of best fit to estimate the cost of a job the last two and a half hours Okay, so to do that, what we do, so we go to two and a half hours here on the x-axis, and we're going to go up to the line of best fit, and I would draw this on the page using a pencil and a ruler, and then come across, and you can see we've got that to be £150. So I've estimated the cost of a job that lasts two and a half hours to be £150, and that's it. So in terms of using your line of best fit, if they ask you to estimate the cost of a job lasting two and a half hours, you go to two and a half hours, you go up to your line of best fit, and across. Now obviously, again, with the line of best fit, you might have a slightly different answer to somebody else, but whenever it comes to marking it, as long as you've drawn a line of best fit and you've drawn up and across, they'll accept that as long as it's, you know, close enough. You know, if your line of best fit was going up that way and you've gone up and across and they wouldn't accept it but as long as you've done a, like a decent line of best fit and you go up and across you'll be fine okay next part our next part says estimate the duration of a job cost them 180 pounds so in other words how long should a job that costs 180 pounds last so I want you to think, in terms of your line of best fit, how you might use your line of best fit to estimate the, the duration of a job that costs £180. Okay, so again, you would get your Rainier pencil, and this time you're going to go to £180, and you're going to go across to the line of best fit, and you're going to come down. And as you can see, we're in the middle of three and four, so that's 3.5 hours. So how long should a job that costs £180 last? That'd be three and a half hours. So three and a half hours. And that's it. So our estimate for the duration of a job that costs £180 would be three and a half hours. And that's it. 
Okay, let's have a look at our next part. So our next part is to look at a thing called outliers. So here we've got our scatter graph again with those plumbing jobs and the prices. And the question says circle the outlier. So if you're asked to find an outlier, you just look at the points and look for any obvious points that are or away from the rest of the points. And this point's obviously an outlier if we consider it. It's only an hour long in terms of the job. But the price is almost £240. And that's just one thing I want to point out. How much would this job be exactly? So it's very important with scatter graphs, you look at the scales. So here, this is £30. So as you can see, we've got one, two, three, four, five five little boxes is 30 pound so 30 divided by five is six so each of the little boxes is six pound so in terms of this job here if we wanted to know the exact price of this job i would probably go to 210 pound so you get 216 222 228 so that job is 228 pound so if you need to read and know the exact values of your points it obviously makes sure you know what each of the little boxes are worth and likewise whenever we're using our lines of best fit in this question it was quite nice because they actually were 150 pound and 180 pound but if it was for instance the box just above 150 pound because we know each of the little boxes now is worth six by doing 30 divided by five is six if it was for instance this one up here that'll be 156 pound and so on and it's very important to be able to read your axes okay so that was the outlier that one there so in terms of the question it just asks us to circle the outlier so the outlier is that one so in this video so far we've looked at how to plot points on scatter graphs We've looked at the types of correlation, positive, negative, no correlation. We've looked at how to draw a line of best fit and how to use a line of best fit to make estimations. And we've also looked at outliers. And the last thing I want to point out is when you might need to be careful in terms of using a line of best fit. So here we've got a scatter graph and it's for one, two, three, four, five, six students. And it's got the time that they spent revising for a test in one night in hours and the test score. So for instance, this student here, they studied for half an hour that night and they got 20% in the test. This student here, they studied for six hours that night and they got just under 70 percent and actually let's just read off what the value that is is one two three four five ten ten divided by five is two so that's 70 is that 68 percent so if they revised for six hours they got 68 percent and so on so the question says estimate the test score for a student who revised for five hours so what we would do here is we would draw a line of best fit so I've drawn a line of best fit and I've tried to draw the line of best fit as close to the points as possible. And what we want to do is we want to estimate the test score for a student who revised for five hours. So we've drawn our line of best fit. So we're going to go for, to five hours on the X axis. We're going to go up to the line of best fit and we're going to go across. And as you can see, if we go to five hours up and across, we get to the one little box above 60. Remember, each one of the little boxes is five little boxes. Ten divided by five is two. So each one of the little boxes is worth two. So that's going to be 62 percent. So our estimate for a student who revised five hours that night would be 62 percent. And that's it. So let's have a look at our last part, and this is the bit that I really want to focus on now. And the question says, explain why it might not be appropriate to use your line of best fit to estimate the test score of a student who revised for nine hours. So we've got our scatter graph, and we've been asked, why is it not appropriate to use our line of best fit? We've got our line of best fit to estimate the test score for a student who revised for nine hours. So as you can see, we've got these points, one, two, three, four, five, six of them, and they go up to six hours. So we want to know why is it not appropriate to estimate the test score for someone who's revised for nine hours? Now, the key point here is that the values that we've been given, the data we've been given, only go between half an hour and six hours. Whenever we use a line of best fit, we kind of know what might happen in between those points. But once you go past six hours, once you go past that last point, we're not entirely sure what might happen. So, for instance, this was the time spent revising on one particular evening. Now, if a student spent nine hours revising, that might be too long. So they might become a bit exhausted the next day and might not actually get a good test score in that test. So the main point is that whenever you go beyond the range of the data, so once you go beyond the value that you're given using a line of best fit it's not very reliable so let's write that down and that's it so i've just written down it's beyond the range of the given data so nine hours is beyond the range of the given data so it's unreliable so we shouldn't use it may not be appropriate to use our line of best fit and it's called extrapolation and extrapolation isn't as reliable as going within the data that you've been given and that's it so in this video we've looked at scatter graphs we've looked at the type of correlation plotting points drawn lines of best fit we've looked at how to use the lines of best fit we've looked at outliers reading the scales we've looked at how to answer some questions and also and we've looked at when we need to be careful in terms of using our lines of best fit and that's it and that's it so in this video we'll go through scatter graphs i really really hope you find it useful if you want some extra practice on scatter graphs in the description below there's a link to the practice questions there might be quite a nice one to print off so that you can actually do the scatter graph questions on the the paper if you can so hopefully that'll be useful for you uh, and just keep up the hard work today obviously there's 87 days to go into gcc maths exam so Keep up the hard work in class, at home, with your revision, and hopefully all that hard work will pay off and you'll get the grade that you want on your GCSE foundation paper. But anyway, I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Okay, cheers. Bye.